Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. If you are new here, my name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And here on the Pet Parenting Reset, we talk about dog behavior, dog training, cat behavior, um, dog and cat nutrition and enrichment, all the things. And today we are talking about four things you need to know, you need to be aware of if you are about to or just adopted a puppy or a kitten. Now, even if you haven't just adopted a puppy or a kitten, maybe you adopted an adult dog or cat, that's okay too. These things still apply, so stick around. Okay, so listen, I get it. Cats and dogs, puppies and kittens are the cutest, most adorable things. A lot of times we adopt a dog or a cat, puppy or a kitten, kind of spur of the moment because we see you know, we just happen to be somewhere, we see a puppy or a kitten that needs a loving home, and we're like, ah, yes, they're so adorable, and we bring them home, and there's not a lot of forethought. Now, yes, occasionally, I know I have been there, and a lot of people I know have been there, it has been very intentional and well thought out. But even in those cases where it was intentional and well thought out, these things may not have been on your list, so, Let's talk about four things you need to know to prepare. Of course, when you bring home a new puppy or a kitten, there's lots of things you need to get. There are lots of lists out there. I'm not gonna regurgitate all of that information. These things are, these four things are things you may not have thought of. So let's dive into the very first one, which is species appropriate nutrition. So whether we're talking about a cat or a dog, a kitten or a puppy, species appropriate nutrition is incredibly important and something that most people don't know a whole lot about. We've been very conditioned very quickly to believe that the dry bags of food on the shelf are what we feed our dogs and cats, and unfortunately, these are not species appropriate nutrition. Dogs are carnivores. Cats are obligate carnivores, meaning they require meat to survive. Now, it is especially important for puppies and kittens to get balanced nutrition. Now, Okay, yes, there's some debate out there on what really is balance, what really is required for dogs and cats. I get that, but for puppies and kittens, we cannot make a whole lot of mistakes. They're growing and we want to make sure they are getting all of the adequate nutrients to make sure they grow up properly, that their bones form properly, that their musculoskeletal system is all in check in, intact, their brains get plenty of, you know, all the good amino acids, fatty acids, everything it needs so that your cat or dog forms properly, right? Which is why I highly recommend species appropriate nutrition commercially available to you so that we're not making a whole, especially if you are new to feeding a species appropriate diet, which I'm going to elaborate on here in just a second. Especially if you're new to it, yes, doing a DIY, making it at home is great, but for puppies and kittens, I always recommend commercially available foods to make sure they are getting everything they need. So what exactly do I mean by species appropriate nu nutrition? Well, I just said that dogs are carnivores, cats are obligate carnivores. This means that their primary diet is it, it's primarily meat-based. We're talking about muscle meats, organs, bone, or eggshell calcium, preferably bone, but there's a lot that goes into it, which is why if you wanna do it yourself, if you wanna make it yourself, that's wonderful, that's great, let's wait until your dog or cat is at least a year old, so you can take that first year of their life to learn all about it while feeding commercially available foods that are well-balanced for puppies and kittens, and then we can start doing the DIY. But we are talking about fresh foods that mimic what a dog or cat in the wild would eat. And really, if you think about some of the major factors that are affecting our dogs and cats today, they are obese, they are getting diabetes, they're getting kidney disease, they're getting arthritis and dental disease. A lot of this has to do with the foods that we are feeding them. Those bags of dry food that we find on the store shelf are not healthy for them. So we can do better, that's the first tip. All right, the second tip is actually gonna play off of the first tip because once you start doing some research on feeding species appropriate nutrition to your dog and cat, one of the things you're gonna see is that bone broth is incredibly like 
everybody talks about it. It's, it's wonderful and making it yourself is actually really easy. Yes, there are companies that make really great bone broth for dogs and cats, but you can make it at home really easily. In fact, I have um, another video on my channel where I made bone broth. I will link it in the description for you. Bone broth is something that even if you start out feeding commercially available dry foods, adding bone broth is going to be an excellent gateway to get you over into the fresh food for your pet. It's incredibly easy to make. It's super delicious and nutritious. Here are some of the benefits of bone broth for your pet. It is full of vitamins and minerals like iron, vitamin A, vitamin K, fatty acids, selenium, zinc, and manganese. Bone broth is also really great for animals that are feeling a little bit under the weather. So if your pet is just not feeling all that great, supplementing their regular diet with bone broth or just providing them bone broth for a quick fast while they're not feeling well is going to provide them plenty of nutrients while not overwhelming their digestive system. And it provides a boost to the gut. It is very good for the gut, especially when we think about pets that already have digestive issues. Bone broth is incredible for them. And because when we make bone broth, we're pulling all of that wonderful collagen out of the bones to make the broth, it is incredible joint support for our animals as well. All right, guys, we are halfway through. We're two tips in and two tips to go. So this, the third tip <laughs> is to be cautious about vaccination. Now, I am not an anti-vaxxer. I am an anti-over-vaxxer. There is a difference, okay? I believe that some vaccinations are necessary while over-vaccination is providing more risk than good to our pets. Now, I don't want to overwhelm this video with all of the information that I know to be true about vaccines because that would take a very long time. I will uh, link my podcast in the description below. Definitely check out the podcast because I have talked about vaccines multiple times more in depth. Here's the bottom line. The amount of vaccines we give our pets is entirely too great. The amount uh, that we actually put in an, an, a single injection for some dogs is too great. For instance, a vaccine for, let's say, rabies. Your Chihuahua and your Greyhound are gonna get the exact same dosage. Mm, that doesn't seem right to me. Does it seem right to you? No. Now, in addition, we can do something called titer testing, which again, I talk about in detail on the podcast. It is where we actually do a blood draw and measure antibodies. So if your pet has, it's, it's like a, a pregnancy test, it's either positive or negative, right? If your pet has antibodies for whatever the vaccine is, they don't need any more vaccine because they already have measurable antibodies. Why would you continue to vaccinate? Now, vaccines can do more harm than good. Uh, when was the last time your vet talked to you about the risk versus reward of whatever it is you're putting in your pet? Make sure you're asking them about that. Look more into detail about vaccinosis. Again, something we've talked about on the podcast. I will link in the description. There is a lot to take in here when we talk about vaccines, and I don't want to overwhelm this video with it, but be cautious. There are two veterinarians that I highly recommend you seek out to learn more about vaccines. Dr. Jean Dodds, D-O-D-D-S, has a revised vaccination schedule for kittens and puppies that I highly recommend to people. You can Google Healthy Dog Workshop Vaccine Protocol. Uh, it's a revised vaccine schedule. It's gonna be a little bit different than the vaccine schedule your veterinarian has and uses, but they will accept it, of course, because you've done your research and can revise that puppy or kitten vaccine schedule to be easier on your pet while still providing protection. The second veter veterinarian that I recommend for vaccine information is Dr. Will Falconer. He has a load of really, really great information on his website, Vital Animal. Not just about vaccination, though he is one of the veterinarians I go to when I have a question about vaccination. So those are two resources I highly recommend you seek out prior to vaccinating your pet. 
All right, so the fourth and final tip for today is to go in to your new relationship with your dog, cat, kitten, puppy. First of all, being positive, being patient, understanding that it is going to be very important for you to learn how to communicate appropriately with your dog or cat. See, we as humans bear the responsibility of learning our pet's body language. Now our pet is going to learn our body language. There is no doubt about it. The question is, <laughs> are we gonna do it? And we absolutely should. So train, set up a training schedule for your pet right away. Now, I understand that cats and kittens, it's not traditionally thought of that we train them. But yes, in fact, we actually do. We wanna get them on a feeding schedule. We wanna get them on a sleeping schedule. We wanna get them on a play schedule. There actually is a lot of training going on when you adopt a cat or a kitten as well. It just may be a little bit more unconscious than what you intentionally do with a dog. So positive reinforcement training is the only type of training that I recommend for any animal, <laughs> um, including humans. It is scientifically proven, it is the best way we learn, it is the best way our dogs learn, it is the best way our cats learn, it is the best way mammals in general learn. So yeah, let's go ahead and, and right up front know that we're gonna put the time and effort in to use positive reinforcement to learn our pet's behavior, to create a solid routine for them, and to train when necessary. One thing that I say that people are really not thrilled about me saying, but it is the truth, is that if your pet is exhibiting a behavior you do not like, that is them communicating to you that something is not going right. Whether that is they are bored, they're not being provided enough enrichment, they're not being provided enough stimulation, they need or want something. When bad behaviors, quote unquote, bad behaviors occur with our pets, it's us we need to look to, not them, to start making some changes, figuring out what it is they need or want and helping them with, with what they need or want and by helping them to understand appropriate ways to communicate with us. So the burden lies on us as the pet parent. Again, not popular, but very true. So those are four tips you might not have heard on any other list when you were going to adopt a puppy or a kitten. These are definitely things that you want to think of, that you need to be prepared for, that you need to plan for. Even if you have already adopted the puppy or the kitten, it is never too late to make sure we are doing the right things moving forward. So with that, I hope you and your new puppy or kitten or dog or cat are living your best lives. Make sure to give your pets some extra love from me. Uh, again, check out the podcast if you haven't already. It is the Pet Parenting Reset, wherever you get your podcast. I also hope to see you on Patreon. Uh, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. You get extra content there, bonus content behind the scenes, and it helps me to continue to bring content like this to pet parents like you. With that, have a wonderful day. Until next time, bye guys.